back in France. So last we left this room, we had just got the range hood built, sanded, filled, and I had just started putting on the first coat of the bottom part. So my goal is to make it feel like it's possibly stone or limestone, so it kind of fits in with our faux stone walls that we actually have in the rest of the basement that are real, but in here they're not. Uh, so that goal is that. And then above on the chimney breast part, I don't actually know if you can see the pediment that we have on the very top. However, the top section, um, you know, in America, I'd probably go get a piece of nice copper cut or, um, or zinc or something like that. However, I don't know where to get that here yet. Uh, so eventually maybe I will do that. But for now, we're gonna play the pretend game and I'm gonna do a paint finish. Even paint finishes here are different. Um, you know, boy, in the early 90s, you know when faux finishes were really, really big and we did parchments and I never did the whole sponge painting thing. I just couldn't get behind that. But um, the parchments and the stone and all that kind of stuff. Um, I used to teach seminars on that. And some of this will come in handy right now because we're trying to mimic um, the idea of it being slate or um, a worn metal or something like that for the top portion. So the top portion is going to be dark. It's going to be black, charcoal, something like that. Um, just to kind of tie in the ovens and some of the other details that we have in, in the room. And then, don't forget when Rob gets back here. Oh, I can't point. Um, up here above the fridge, I'm hoping we're going to get more cabinetry built in and uh, kind of make those look like they're fitted out and they're part of the wall. So, um, here we go. Okay, so the nice thing about having several weeks in between a first or second coat uh, is that it's officially dry. So, the nice thing is it's nice outside today, the sun is shining, it's not too humid outside. So things are sanding beautifully. What I wanted, it was very rough uh, before, but now it's really much better without losing too much of the texture because I was trying to layer on texture so it looks like stone was cut um, in order to, to build the main base of the mantle. And um, now it's starting to feel smooth, which is great. And um, I think I could definitely put on another coat and then I'd like to do a glaze coat, something that can kind of age it a little. I do have uh, my KitchenAid here when I first bought it when we came to the country. Um, it's cream. When we got married in 1990, um, my colors, when, when you know the mom and dads ask, what are your colors gonna be? Um, my colors were uh, cream and white and black uh, for like inside the house uh, as the base colors. And then I added in that more like dark green and, and burgundy and stuff, because that's of course what we did then. Um, anyways, so I luckily, we were moving out of the whites and we're moving into cream right now in the trends, which I love. So I have a cream KitchenAid now, and um, it just matches perfectly with the color right now that is on the range hood. So I don't want to tweak it too much, but I do want to get some depth of tone and color into it so it feels a lot more realistic. Um, so, um, I think I will do that, um, but there's a part of me that just really wants to start the first coat of the, of the chimney breast kind of part, so I may just go do that. It's going to take a minute though. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a new product I'm using. They're formulated slightly different than we're used to. Usually I would mix some kind of paint with a glaze and things like that, so I think maybe these are already combined. From what I can understand, uh, maybe it isn't. I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Worst case, I change it. Okay, so that was fascinating. Uh, this stuff is interesting. It's thick like cream cheese, slides on beautifully. Um, let's see if you can see inside here. You see that? It kind of looks like if it was licorice cream cheese. It's <laughs> It's kind of what it looks like, which, you know, thank heavens. I'm terribly in the mood for black licorice now. I like it. Some people don't, but it is just like if licorice and cream cheese met. <laughs> um, we'll see how it goes on, like in terms of it drying. It's supposed to be one thin coat right off the top. The second coat we can put on with a trowel to give it some depth. It's supposed to be slightly metallic. 
and uh, depending on how the light hits, even how it's drying right now with um, the striations that I put uh, on for the first coat, I'm kind of liking it. So we'll see how it goes. Love the color, love that it's not super jet black. I love that sort of aged gray look. Uh, so who knows, we'll see. I'm kind of happy about it. So the thing when you're doing a creative project and there's no set rules on what we're doing, it's not like a normal paint job, you have to be a little bit experimental. So uh, before I do another coat on this, I wanted to do a little experiment. I found this in my shelf of stuff I've used in the past. It's like a wood stain, that's walnut. And um, at home, I have a burnt umber tint that sometimes I would put in glazes or things like that. And it just did a great job at kind of antiquing a little and giving a little depth to stone and things like that. I literally had the bottle for like, I don't know, 25 years, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's a very big bottle, but still, I can't wait for it to get here if this doesn't work. But I saw this and was like, who knows? Let's see. Um, it is water cleaning, so that should go and be compatible with this. Um, so I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. All right, let's get it open. And let's use my finger because that's the best way. All right, so when you're ex experimenting, you always have to do it in an inconspicuous spot. Technically, I really should do it on the other side. You really can't see over there. Let's move. So when you're experimenting, you really should go and find an inconspicuous spot to experiment on. And so I came to this side instead because you really don't see this at all when you walk in or anything else, especially once the other cabin trees over here. So I got a little wee bit of stain, put a little bit of water in it, and then thought, let's use a sponge and let's give it a go. See what happens. Ooh, looks dark. Looks dark. All right, let's see. Where is there some good texture here? Let's see if this is going to be our solution or not. Maybe I need water on my sponge. But interesting, guys. Interesting. All right. Can you see? It's just that little less stark cream. So, and you can see where the initial one went, so we can't be that strong. That's when we need to start adding the water. But I think in the more lighter water down area, I think that's gonna be just fine. Well, I couldn't help myself. I kept going a little bit to this front part, so I wanted to see the light. So I knew that on that side, it's shaded, it's hard to see a little bit, but I really wanted to see the difference, and you can definitely see the difference between here and here, and I hardly use anything at all. Um, so it's interesting, learn a few things with the sponge of what it can accomplish with stain in terms of texture um, and adding texture and things like that. So yeah, I like it. Um, it. It maybe is a little warm. Uh, I wouldn't mind it a little less warm, but it is walnut, which I usually really like. But um, so yeah, we'll keep going and we'll see what happens next. It might freeze tonight, so I thought I'd bring in a few more blossoms before that happens. Some of them are just starting to come out again. So yes, trying to catch a few, but lovely. Uh, okay, day two, let's review. So this is what it's looking like. Uh-huh, I like it. I think it's gonna be good. I don't even mind, it looks kind of dark in the picture, but I don't even mind the color of the stain. So as it dried, it got a little lighter, which I don't hate. And it makes it look a little more limestone-ish. So I think we can play with that a little bit. Now the top part, you can definitely see the striations. And I like that idea, but it needs to look a little more um, random. Not so like I just missed spots. So you can kind of tell, it's almost like it has a nap. One direction it goes one color, the other way it goes the other, just like in a velvet or something, um, which I like it make it, I like that the lines make it look like it might be metal because it kind of has that brushed metal idea. But um, I don't know, we're gonna have to play a little bit and see what else we can do. And uh, I'm gonna still do another coat of the 
plaster stuff <laughs> that has a tint to it. And because um, it still needs to cover up some of our oops, connecting points and stuff like that. So we will do that, let that dry. And then I think the next coat will be fun. So we're at the first 24 hours that Rob's here. Guess what he's doing? Yep, on his trusty, dusty mower, happy as a clam, doing what he likes to do. He just can't handle it. He just can't handle seeing shaggy grass. So off he goes, very happy to be out there, I think. All right, I'm finally out here looking at this tree. Yeah, it was a big one that came down. It's unfortunate, I was just measuring that. That's. That's uh, more than 20 inches up and down for sure. Half, more than half a meter. I think half a meter, something like that. And lots of wood. You hate to lose the oaks. We've got such beautiful oak trees around here. But uh, we lost one. Hey, look, a friend. Man, it feels so much warmer today than the last few days. It's like uh, maybe, uh, it's maybe around 45, 50 Fahrenheit, which is uh, around a little less than plus 10 Celsius. But windy as anything, so nervous for the roof. My goodness, doesn't that roof look good? We just can't get enough of it. Just got to show you every chance I get. Hopefully the roofers don't get blown off the roof today. I'm a little nervous for them. Yeah, it's windy. It is windy, but they got the tarp on. They were working, sometimes they work underneath the tarp, which is really impressive. Yeah, well, checking in on it. I did my little patch job. Looks like it kind of has chicken pox or something, but uh, it's just enough little extra texture here and there to cover up a few more things that we don't need to see. And, uh, and lighten up that one pillar so that everything will be the same tone later. And we'll see how it dries and then we'll sand it and then we'll get that top coat on and then I can finish the top and then we're done. Yay. Okay, we got the other coat on. I'm gonna give a little sand. We'll do that real quick. Uh, and then let's move on. And I'll probably do the top charcoal part again and see what kind of texture we can get. And then we'll see how it looks after it dries again. The only problem is that oh, we always need eight hours of drying in between. So it goes slow. Short work, long dry. Okay, things are sanded, they're coated. The top part is drying. It is now time to see how our little stain job goes. Uh, so stay tuned. It'll be a nice fast one for you. I just finished a final coat on the stone part. Um, I actually did a dry brush of the same cream paint that we've been using in a bunch of other places in the house. And I think that really helped to give it a little more dimension. And let me see if I can let you see a little bit of what that looks like. I don't know if you can tell, but gives you a bit of an idea of the highs and the lows. And then the top part I've been really frustrated with, to be frank, uh, but we did one more, actually two more coats. I wasn't happy yet. so. We'll see how this all dries, and next time you see it, hopefully I have it decked out for Christmas. I still have to paint the top mantle up there, the top part you can't see, but um, I will get that done. And then hopefully it'll look nice and festive. Almost done. So there are a lot of things on this adventure that's fantastic, and some things have been interesting. Um, you know, sometimes the things that you get used to at home and how you get ready and what you sleep in and all that kind of stuff, is definitely something that's within <clears throat> kind of our comfort zones. And this bedroom, although beautiful, um, has always been interesting because at first we didn't have a bed and we had mattresses on the floor and it kind of felt like we were camping for a good bit of time. Um, now we have a bed this last year and that has been amazing. Now with the curtains up, it seems silly, but psychologically it just sort of feels like the room is starting to feel like it's getting put together. Um, and I didn't know what we were going to find. I didn't know if they were going to be full of holes or whatever. Um, but that's been wonderful. And this last little bit also, right before we left in the summer, I found this little mirror that just sort of sits on probably what they call a coiffus. 
uh, hopefully I said the right quote, uh, anyways, um, like a vanity table, basically, right? A little dresser with a mirror. And uh, it was a great deal. And I thought, okay, this is good. Someday I will find a bottom. Still haven't totally found a bottom with enough storage maybe, but I have one little desk piece that I actually had downstairs um, in one of the main floor bedrooms. Uh, it's like an old washstand with a really nice uh, marble top. And it these things are sticking out. I have to see if Rob can help me get those out. Um, these are the anchors that held the horizontal and vertical pieces that were kind of like a marble backsplash for the washstand. And um, it, well, there's a piece that's broken, so I'll probably not put it on, and it kind of hinders how much space I have for this uh, mirror on top. But this has been such a pleasure to have in the morning. Our bathroom, I don't know if you remember it, it's very tiny. One day we will renovate it. It won't get any bigger, but hopefully more efficient and less gross if we're being honest but anyways um but this window in the morning has been such a pleasure to have the light and um with no window in our current bathroom uh this has been a joy the last week or two that I've had this it has been so delightful I have had my stuff all on the fireplace up to this point my vitamins are still up there but it's been nice to kind of get that cleaned off I just would like to um, let that have its own little moment to shine and eventually maybe I'll have storage in the bathroom for that but um, at this point it's been the joie de vivre the joy of living um, to be able to have this little spot in the morning and have some of my other things in another place and uh, it's just been a delight so hope you guys have a good day and find joy in something in your life see you later And time for a wonderful meal at one of our favorite places, the Prestige. Definitely one of the nicer places in Beaujé. I believe Michelin star. Yeah, you can see it right there. Mm. Stay bon. Santé. Should I do this? Oh, yeah, here we go. There we go. Yum.